Oke. So, again, thanks a lot for attending. It means a lot for us, and hopefully, we have more of these going forward. Uh, my topic is the, some of these emerging technologies, uh, the business disruption that is happening, and its impact on current job market. Most important, like he gave a really good insight on the future. I'm going to talk on the present because AI is no more a futurist technology. It is, it is today we have, it's a mature technology and how it is impacting your job today and how to uh, understand what's happening in the market. So what the trends are going on and I'll just give a quick background about myself. Um, my name is Kiran and I've been a tech consultant. I've worked in startups, enterprise. Right now I'm working for Toronto Hydro. I also conduct uh, product management and blockchain courses here. Um, and I'm, I'm like, I've always worked in uh, roles which are very close to technology. So I typically as a consultant, I have to understand the holistic view, 360 degree view of what's happening in the entire industry. Uh, and so first I have to talk on disruption. And when we speak on disruption, Clayton Christian, the, he is an authority on this topic. Most of the disruption and the buzzwords which Deloitte and these people use, the, he is the one who introduced them. And what disruption really is, is it displaces an existing market. So we are not going to new market, an existing market, or it's an existing industry or a technology, and it produces something new, more efficient and worthwhile. And most important is how he ends it. Is it is both destructive and creative. So this is the basis for why this all Silicon Valley innovation, everything is happening, is this definition. And so when you say, let's take some examples. So market. So what he suggests is it goes into an untapped market. It starts with an untapped market. Like nowadays, you may be hearing a lot of fintechs talking about the unbanked population. The population in many times, small uh, communities, indigenous communities, or in rural India, like these people who are unbanked, the banks think, oh, it's it, I, it's not profitable for me to venture there. But those are people, human, they are users. They also need banking services. So venturing into that, bringing a product in that market, and then slowly uh, capturing a, a bigger geographic region. Let's talk about industry, entertainment industry, Netflix. The best example, even before that, the entertainment industry is one which is constantly transforming. And Netflix is the best use case. In fact, if you Google for his name at Netflix, he has explained very well how Netflix is the best example of disruptive innovation. And uh, I don't want to go in this in a lot depth, uh, but basically it, 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 it attacks you on multiple angles. It even has changed your human behavior. So that is the beauty of beauty or it's a double edged sword. So, um, and then it's also technology. So if you remember, even now, any application, the same icon is a floppy disk. But today's kids don't even know what a floppy disk is, right? It's a USB. So the, the where we are storing the technology that was used as the primary data storage is completely gone. School kids today do not even know what that is about. And similarly, uh, it's destructive and uh, so and also this, uh, this this disruptive innovation is not just about technology. In North America, community colleges did something amazing. What community colleges did is people earlier had to do a four-year degree. It used to be expensive, and the new data suggests the return on investment (ROI) of community colleges is better than that of a very expensive six-digit four-year degree. So community colleges disrupted the education industry a few decades back. So this is another example of disruptive innovation. And this impacts each one of us around. So what, I'm not sure why the mm -hmm. quality is not that great actually. Uh, should I just change uh, the, it's really bad. The next slide will be better. Okay. Uh, or I'm probably it's taking, I'll just disconnect, sorry guys, I'll just disconnect and again connect. 
Maybe there's a lag on the phone. Try the laptop. Yeah, so this one is good. This one is good. Now it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, something. Okay, so when does this disruption occur? When there is a intersection of business meets technology meets human. And human is the most important. Your behavior changes. Now if you go to standard cable channel and in, a, in between a movie, there is a 15 minute ad, you go crazy. You cannot watch advertisements for more than 5-10 minutes. Because Netflix has changed our behavior. The way we consume entertainment has directly affected. Remember 7-8 years back, standing on TTC for an hour, it was okay, it was common. Or any country you are from, the public transport is okay. But people who are used to Uber pool, you cannot stand for now 1 hour. Even um, so, it, it first is it directly impacts your human behavior. The next is technology changes. Think about how you consume audio. It was cassette player, then it was first those big players, then cassette, then MP3. So the technology is also changing, and at the same time, the most important is business. So business is the partnerships uh, that are ha happening between two companies. So just I registered this Eventbrite program. In the back end, Eventbrite is giving me option to integrate with a s another uh, software which gives me the option to print conference badges. Another software integrates email and gives me advanced feature. Other So the type of business partnerships and most important is the the uh, the business models they are completely changing when this is happening so then what is innovation so innovation the one most important thing is at the end of the day the end user who is affected or is the consumer who is using that product there is value added and i want to be very clear on the value aspect value does not mean it is more expensive or is it less expensive or it is less time it is saving time like earlier it used to be simple is this product saving time for the user or is this product um, um, cheaper for the consumer now you think like let's say you are in your home a burger joint is 10 minutes down the line if you go and eat the burger and come back to your home it will take just 30 minutes but you what you as a consumer are doing is you are ready to order it on an app, it will take 30, 40 minutes to just arrive and then you will eat and you will pay a fee, delivery fee on top of that. So you are actually spending more time and you are also spending more amount. But still the, there is a value involved and that value is the convenience. It turns out consumers and enterprises are ready to to as long as value you it is and it is also very difficult to understand what value is because it's a very intangible metric so the, the focus is to create value for them and another most important is mass organic adoption in silicon valley terms it's called as a uh, world domination you start facebook started in the howard university campus to rate college students that's all in one small college, not even the entire college, in one division. Today, Facebook is, it has the whole world's KYC, it, is, it has the identity of almost 1 billion people. So this is, it starts from something small, mobile adoption. The way it started, started slow and then it hit you big time. So that, that's, uh, that, that is what is truly innovation. So, uh, actually I'm not happy with, oh, anyways. Uh, so who is this for? So why is this technology, all these billion dollars being poured in trillion, for whom is this all happening? And the, the answer is, uh, I'm not sure who this is, okay, play video. So the answer is this. All this innovation, everything is not happening for you and me. It is happening for the next generation. So what this video shows, it shows a toddler who has been given a gaming device, uh, which is from 10 years back. It does not have touch screen. And the toddler cannot use it. A kid just is confused because he, a gadget is in the toddler's hand and cannot use it because it's not touch screen. Because the toddler does not even know that there can be a device without touch screen. Only our generation knows it. 
touch screen is just so and and the toddler starts crying the second most important is a product should be so easy that even a toddler can uh, can should be able to use it and that is when if a toddler can use it then it will have mass adoption so this is in the mind of uh, of the vision of the product and the product managers and the ceo so uh, a product so and this is not just about consumer products like app application it is even enterprise products so nowadays all these devops products or even automation testing it has become so easy even a kid can deploy a application on a server on cloud earlier it used to be and it used to be specialized one week kind of time used to go in that now it's just few clicks and you deploy um, your application on the cloud even a kid can do that so so when i'm saying it's not just about consumer it is any application any innovative application who can use it it's a toddler and it's changing so when you have that in mind i just want to touch base on before going into uh, the specifics of the technologies what is the difference between digitization digitalization and digital transformation 80s and 90s was just digitization it was just stupid data where you are scanning something storing it it was just digitalization a digit is like you are converting the physical thing into a digital thing or uh, sometimes it used to be small applications which are used by just one department one users one type of user or just for an individual that was the most st starting point of it this is where we started even though this is there it's not like it's, it's gone then came the phase of digitalization where if you have worked in enterprises it was sap where it's no more just you're not just thinking about one department but it is more of at a holistic level uh, you uh, you can easily use the same application suite across uh, different departments and digitalization is is also about using all the latest technology tools to if the most important thing that digitalization changed is it was the uh, the business models changed and um, everything around that changed and that was the most Uh, the phase where there was the maximum it jobs created in it was in this phase because now you everything that you are doing was uh, all activities and tasks that you, you were doing suddenly were more of uh, uh, it enabled and one it system could easily talk with another it system so this is when digitalization happened and nowadays if you just go on indeed jobs or if you go on linkedin jobs under digital transformation you will see hundreds of jobs every big bank every big organization or even a startup has a digital transformation department they will call it different names platform modernization innovation but all of that falls under digital transformation and most important this is a mindset change it is a completely mindset change where the entire the 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 proposition of your product is customer centric so it it completely it it, it is it is one of the best it, the focus is entirely on ux so when i say ux the focus is entirely on the uh, the journey of the uh, so it's a user experience so how and it will help the user to um, do their same task easily the most important was which he was talking about is now how automation but intelligent automation like ai and robotics can help so it was here you could just uh, so here you could just scan something and store it here the same scan document went from different departments it was approved and here it was it was so smart that when you scan a document it exactly knows reading the barcode and the information on it where to send it automatically gets approved and uh, it gets stored so the end to end journey is no manual intervention so this is the difference between and we are right now over here and just you can and you can search for yourself under the digital transformation umbrella maximum jobs are being created uh so this is something he also touched which is the uh, future of work so what future of work means is the type of workforce earlier until now it was very simple that you have to have these many degrees only then you can get into a starting job now e and y uh, ernst and young 
their UK branch, they announced that they do not require a computer a developer or developer to be four years degree holder. Even if it is grade 12 and they can, they can crack their uh, online test, we will consider it. The type of people, the workforce is changing. Do you really need full-time people? How much should be the percentage between contract and full-time? And if you see all these big enterprises in Canada, they are confused. Some years they will just have contractors, then suddenly some CIO will say, we need to change our strategy and they will hire only full-time. So they are still trying to figure out what is the best style of workforce. How much should be distributed, like remote, offshore, all of these are different categories and where and how much of my people should be working like that. The most important thing in workforce is the gig worker. So when I say gig, it is like Uber delivery. So which is the, it is called as the gig economy. Uh, and that is, of course, we all know that is like the biggest, uh, fastest growing sector. Then the type of work, again, using a lot of technologies, things are getting automated. And if you see in the last five months, three big IPOs hit uh, Wall Street, uh, Slack, which is, which killed emails. Uh, then there is uh, uh, Zoom, video conferencing, I mean, much more than video conferencing, but Although Google Hangout and Skype were the biggest players, a startup came with the 8 billion work to. And today, we work, which launched their IPO. All of it is the biggest IPOs all fall under future of work. Which have, so this, when these IPOs, all of them have a $10 billion valuation just at the IPO level, that means it is going to impact each one of us. And it is already impacting each one of us. And then the type of workplace, you like sharing workplace, or even if you go to a TD bank, they have now this nice coaches, the way you sit, the environment around you, the interior, everything is changing. So, uh, so this is the future of work. Uh, and future of work is, a, let me repeat, future of work is not just some buzzword. It is a um, sector, it is like a domain in itself like all this slack and everything falls under that sector, which is called as future of work. Uh, so this just gives you uh, some idea of the type of the traditional to open. This is very task specific. So nowadays even crowd, uh, you can, a lot of people say, I want this to be done. And uh, <laughs> like, let's say I, uh, in India or even here, there is an app where I want to fix like a plumbing uh, job or I want to paint my home. You crowdsource it, people compete with uh, different rates and then one of them will uh, get it. Yeah. And the last is uh, works with physical proximity. There are two extremes. The pure agile people say you have to be in the work every day. Everyone has to be at the same physical location in the same room. And the other thought is everyone is distributed. There is no such thing as, as an office and there is no such thing as a time zone. Um, the, the work culture is changing. But why it is getting mass adoption is because we have these technologies that 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 can be used where the work can be done smoothly we have very high broadband we, uh, the data storage is very cheap so all of this is changing when i said data storage is cheap earlier all the, any company needed more than this room just for physical servers the the, the like the rogers on blower street all of that is uh, the data servers now most of it is on cloud you don't need to even own that uh, so, so when when a company does not need to spend on physical space, then they say, then why do I even need a space for people to come in? So, and this is this is what is changing. I mean, today itself, we work uh, was listed on. Uh, so, how the evolution of jobs is happening? In 90s, it was QC, which is quality control, which is more of an engineering manufacturing the term for a uh, tester. Then it was QA, which is quality analyst. Then it became an automation tester and they started calling it QE, which is quality engineer. And when they, it became QE, it was a developer. It was now no more a 
um, it was a Selenium developer or someone like that. It was no more a manual tester. You need a specialized skill. And then nowadays this DevOps tester is very common. Similarly, mm -hmm. earlier there was business analyst. Then people said we need a BSA, which is someone who can write SQL scripts, basic technology, who can be a bridge between the developers and the functional people. Then Scrum was getting popular and product owner is a very Scrum specific role and the BA or BSA got became a product owner and product manager is something broad. Uh, we like right now I'm conducting a batch here for product manager. Similarly, Earlier there used to be process managers. Now we have agile coaches, and uh, so agile. So process manager is this is the process that's in your company, and I will tell you how to bet, improve it. Then came agile coach. Agile coaches bring all this Kanban, this design thinking, all these different methodologies, and tell you depending on your organization's culture how many people are onshore, offshore, which agile to use, and then there is this digital transformation manager work at the organization level. So agile coach is typically at uh, two, three teams level and uh, digital transformation manager. And all these, uh, if you search on LinkedIn jobs, indeed you will see a lot of jobs being listed already in Canada. And I'll just give a quick uh, uh, good example is Wipro SpectraMind was the biggest BPO company in India. BPO is a uh, business process outsourcing your customer support, call support. Today, that entire company has completely undergone digital transformation. And the name of the company is Wipro Digital Operations and Platform. And it only does chatbots. All that customer support was doing, it is now it's being done by a bot. And it is a core technology company, no more humans who are answering calls, but it is all chatbots and all these technologies. So this is Wipro, it, and, and the thing is, company like Wipro, it was easier for people in, to get an entry level job uh, in uh, BPO. But if that itself gets removed, it, it impacts, it has a big impact on the economy and all of us. And who should be worried? So first of all, I don't want to scare, but no one is safe. Uh, because it can impact you me and the best is uh, so take the case of uber driver uber drivers display uh, disrupted the existing uh taxi, taxi or taxi so they are they were they were really angry but and uber driver became complacent uber recently <laughs> last year announced that they are working on full autonomous car so they don't even need the uber driver so then anytime anyone job can be disrupted but at the same time, and like these are other jobs which typically, uh, so if you are a middleman, uh, if your job has a lot of repetitive and predictive tasks, if you are data entry, these are the ones. Uh, so so Scrum Master is uh, is very popular nowadays. But in True Agile, they say no, you don't even need a Scrum Master. Um, but at the same time, in all Western countries, although there is so much unrest and so much of chaos happening, Unemployment rate is at all time low and we have the technology is mature. What does that tell you? In US, Canada, unemployment rate is also at all time low. Although there is so much chaos on CNN and all, the reason is people are adopting. People are changing the way. The person who, is, who decides to transform their own career is getting a job. And it can mean one of my friends bought a brand new Tesla and is doing Uber's premium Tesla, like in Uber there are different and he is earning more than 150k per annum. So it is depends on how you see. If you want to make money, there are many ways. You can use these technologies and, and to make money for yourself. And or you can upgrade. You can um, take the latest certification. You just have to be continuously in a learning mode. Uh, most in demand job titles. So, so these are not technical, so all the technologies which he Abhinit mentioned, the developer for that, product manager is, is the most, um, product managers are paid in Silicon Valley more than a developer, uh, any role in cloud, so these are most you have already heard, and I'll just touch base on few non-technical rules. 
what we want to say is it is not that it's okay if you're not a developer first of all there is tremendous need for creative roles tremendous um, and when i say creative roles everything around you there is an app for guitar there is an app for every skill out there in the market but how do the app makers or developers understand that skill a musician is actually working with these people a, a sports person is actually working in a technology company a doctor is actually working in a technology company that is when all of your whatever your skill is and it has nothing to do with being a developer there are so many roles in out there for companies who are rebuilding digital products for these sectors the next is most important is all of it is playing with your human psychology and behavior why you click so when you go to booking.com you're go, doing like searching for booking you will get a pop-ups that this uh, this hotel has been booked five times someone is already booking right now they are playing with their psychology nothing it's it's true data earlier also that it was true but now the way the data is shown to you and like i gave you the example like in netflix it gives you that skip intro option when you continuously use it, now you just want to skip and draw. You cannot watch the, those screens. It is playing with your... So all IT companies are hiring psychology and human behavior specialists. Social media managers, growth hackers, how do you go from 1000 users to 1 million users? So 10 million users to 1 billion users. These are specialized, they are called growth hackers and your entire customer support is on social media. So you need a social media manager. There is this, if you search on Forbes.com, ethics officer is the most in demand and the most paying role in IT companies in US because AI is also crossing that unethical ethical line. Where do you stop? And there have been so many instances of unethical behavior by all these IT companies and sometimes they just blame it was a robo. A trading bot, it can be any type of software which is making decisions which has a billion dollar impact and fraud is happening because it's a software flaw and sometimes it's by purpose by mistake so an ethics officer is really important but one i say is inclusion and diversity manager again you can search this on book ibm everyone is hiring earlier there used to be an hr who is taking care of everything but right now uh, especially in a city like toronto there is so much of emphasis on inclusion and diversity. They have a full-time position who ensure that the company culture uh, also is aligned with what they are saying. And so it is no more a statement. They have a full-time role. So if you are from like the HR and that background, you can of course think of these jobs. And all of this falls under this future of work and uh, emerging technologies kind of thing. It's not just the developers. Uh, so technology is with the most impact and why? So why do they have that much of impact? And he covered all these technologies, so I don't want to go there. What I'm trying to say is why is it that these technologies have such a huge impact? How can you find out which is that next technology which is going to? First of all, all of these technologies are horizontal. That means they are not bound by geography. They are not bound by the sector. They are not bound by your job function. AI affects um, a translator, a receptionist, and it affects the CEO. Every job function, every geography. You cannot say blockchain or uh, blockchain is distributed. It is all over the world. So it is not restricted to a geography. Then, and the sectors. It is in auto, in supply chain, in every sector you have these. So this is why they have the biggest impact. Uh, second is, all of these technologies are removing middlemen. If you think of 20 years back, we were surrounded by middlemen. When was the last time you walked into a, a travel agent? You do everything on booking.com. Technology becomes the middleman or intermediary. Uh, there is a push for everything to be digital. Even art is digital. Music is digital. Everything is now digital in nature. Uh, these are very mature technologies. You may be hearing some of them, but R&D has been happening since 70s and 80s, including blockchain. All the concepts of blockchain, cryptography, 
game theory, <coughs> 70s, 80s, economics, all of this has been there. So it's, you may be hearing about them, but they are very mature technologies today. And this is what I want to talk the most is our any society, any system or any physical or digital network, the two main pillars are money and trust. And technologies like blockchain and AI is redefining both. You book an Uber and you trust that unknown driver or you stay in someone's apartment using Airbnb, not because you trust that person, but because you trust the technology. And this technology is called as a reputation algorithm or the way they uh, have that reputation where each one can review each other. They for next time you book an Uber, it will force you to rate the previous Uber driver. You are trusting the tech the, the way trust happened. It was happening in the traditional sense is being transformed. And blockchain with cryptocurrency is changing the way money functions. So the very definition of money, even a five-year kid, when they set up a lemonade stand, the what we try to tell them is the importance of money. We don't tell them what is the importance of USD. We tell them what is the importance of money even at a small age. And that has been changed by these technologies. And it, it is not necessarily only cryptocurrency. A lot of fintech companies are non-blockchain are also working in this. There is top down and bottom and acceptance, which means the governments are implementing. Going back to your questions, uh, the blockchain regulation, even Canadian government is bringing their own uh, digital currency. They are experimenting. It is called as Project Jasper because it is in public money. Uh, everything is on, uh, is on internet. 60 countries are uh, bringing their own digital currency. They, this is just a full show where they are uh, saying bad things, but they themselves are using those technologies. Yeah, I know. It's a, I'm just uh, giving you an example. Yeah. Uh, and data is the new uh, because I, I even I like money is very like <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, going back, uh, so uh, you all of us you have heard of fintech, which is finance and technology, which created a lot of these jobs and uh, all these new small startups in finance. But there is today all of these are proper billion dollar and hopefully the next trillion dollar industries or sectors. And depending on your background, so MarTech is marketing meets technology. Today, all of marketing happens online. MedTech is all the medical uh, thing marries when it marries technology. Clean tech is, uh, the, especially in Canada, it's all clean energy. It's creating a lot of jobs. So travel industry, educational industry, agriculture, drones and agriculture is like a marriage made in heaven in Western countries. So, depending on your background, you can. It's okay if you're not from IT. If you're from marketing, HR, you can still work in the most happening industry. And how do you learn about it? On Eventbrite, Meetup.com, you will find conferences and events specific to these. And that is something we want to address. Like every three, four weeks, we want to talk on specific things where it will be of beneficial. And we will bring industry experts as well. This was the first time, so we did it ourselves. Uh, I just want to show you one video. So I'm going to talk on three next trillion dollar sectors, which have a very bad rap, which people say really bad things about. And I'll just show you a video. I hope this please. Esports is the biggest trillion dollar industry right now. And esports was hated by our parents, by us, to our children. But esports is not just about games, gun, and all. This is esports in Japan and South Korea. These are real sports where hundreds and thousands of people watch it live on YouTube on home. And these are actual games being played. This is the esports sector. So when all these politicians say the gun thing is happening because of esports, ignore. This is what esports is about. This is why it is the trillion dollar industry as of today. And anything that's happening in China, South Korea, Japan will come to North America. This is for sure. And already in small things, this is happening. Um, I'll also tell you that just th two, three weeks back, 
if anyone has heard of the game Fortnite on mobile, there was an uh, Olympics of esports. The prize money was more than Wimbledon. Think about that. When the prize money, there are so many people in that industry being affected. Right from people like us who want to event, organize an event to people who are playing. It's a, it becomes a full sector. The, when Grand Theft Auto game released, in the first week it made more money than the Avengers movie. But people are not talking about it. And Toronto is a good hub for sports, e-sports, e-games, this. So this is what e-sports is about. And it's an amazing sector to be in. Bitcoin blockchain. Bitcoin was always called as the, uh, what do you call, drug money and all that, those names. Central. Yeah, everything. It has been called <laughs> all names. Today, all banks are bringing blockchain, Bitcoin. Every financial sector is uh, has jobs and cannabis industry. This again depends on your moral compass, but cannabis is not always about smoking at all. If your moral compass is there, if you can, if you are ready to work in a brewery and it's a tech product. So some of the products means search a legal regulatory cannabis near you in an app. This has nothing to do with smoking cannabis. So this cannabis, and I, I mean, if anyone is, of you is following the North American stock market, I don't need to tell you how exciting and how much of um, investor excitement is in this sector, and this sector is so all this sector is also like esports. It, it is way more than what you think it is, and there are so many jobs, product manager jobs, well, in this. Uh, so how it impacts uh, you are. Yeah. So how does it impact your day to day responsibilities? Is First of all, there is no manager, flat hierarchy is becoming very common, even in Scotia Bank. Work flexibility, employers are ready to give you a lot of flexibility, very less meetings, uh, videos in person, discussion, there is almost no use of emails. And Slack, which did its IPO, it said that it is an email killer. Um, collaborative and simple productive tools. How it and distributed workforce fun at work. If you have worked in a scrum team, there will be an agile coach telling you all the you will be playing actual games at work. Adults playing games to understand business requirements. Things are changing, and around you it's changing. And the last part, and which I want to bring it is, as I mentioned, there there is a very big push to embrace diversity. If you apply today on Scotia Bank, and this is a sensitive topic, but if you apply on Scotia Bank. You get this option on every. If if you should understand what it means, because your colleague will be uh, will have their own identity and ethnicity, and it is very very important. The company is following. Are you fit for the culture? Do you are how you are getting along with people who are who identify themselves differently? And this is happening on a very big scale. So it is up to you to educate, not just on the technology type side, but also on the other side, where your company culture is going. So this, then the last is recruitment trends. Uh, curiosity, you mentioned your so curiosity is the most in demand. Like in interview, they will check how much you are curious you are. Ideology and mindset. They will, if you are uh, in a startup or something, check your ideology. How much you are for open source. Do you really believe in open source if you are working in open source? So these are all, how much you believe in decentralization of power and authority. These are all, and they actually ask you, and they will uh, have, they will, they will try to get that answer in different ways. But they are checking your ideology. And this ideology is not your political ideology or like that. This ideology is technological ideology. Um, ethnography is how you understand people from other ethnicities and how you get along with them. You know, and one thing is, uh, your of course, certification is the most important. Uh, sometimes they will look for a generalist who knows a little bit of everything, or sometimes it is a very specialized role. And the last is like even recruitment strategies are changing. Uh, there are nowadays online exams are common, behavioral tests are there, uh, machine learning and AI is scanning your resume. So you have to even design your resume such that a machine learning algorithm will scan it. Uh, that, and the, the gone are those days when you are filling out only the big banks are doing it and tell us enough when there are big job descriptions that entire job application takes 45 minutes 
if in many startups and small companies it's just a two minute thing they'll ask you five or ten basic questions they will have a slider of the salary you are expecting and then they will call you if it fits so you don't know what they are looking into uh, behavioral tests psychological tests are becoming very common so uh, this is where jobs are today being created disrupted and this is where you should go if you want a good career for the next 10 years it's just an insurance to uh, for your career thanks and any questions and please you can contact me anytime these are my contacts thanks a lot guys thanks i had to rush it